Hi everyone, I'm back. Yes, it is I, the person you probably forgot about as it has been months since I have posted here on my YouTube. I am very, very sorry that it has taken me so long to get another video up to you. I have been very naughty and spent most of my time over on my TikTok channel posting my clips on there and neglected this side of my um, socials. I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. Well, to make up for it a little, today I have a more unusual um, build for you with my hag. This is a build that I rarely run. Well, I say build, it's more to do with the add-ons. I rarely run these add-ons on my hag, um, mainly because it removes your ability to teleport, and that is the play style of the hag that I prefer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain to you a little bit about what the add-ons do and the map that I'm going to and why I'm going to that map. The uh, perks that I put with it, although you could run any perks that you like, you don't have to run what I'm running here. And then I'm just going to show you a quick game that I had with them just to show you how they work and give you a sense on how to use them. Um, before we get back to that, if you're returning and I really do appreciate it if you are returning after me being gone for so long. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you are new, welcome. Um, I usually post more than what I have been, uh, so you should see more content from me. I just need to get my ass into gear, so forgive me for that. And anyway, we're going to go on to the build now. So, you see there my add-ons. I'm running the iridescent waterlogged shoe and the purple scarred hand. Now the iridescent waterlog shoe, what this does is first it removes your ability to teleport to your traps so you can no longer teleport which is Hag's main power. It also, when a survivor trips the trap they will become hindered by 9% so they become slower and also when they trip the trap you get a buff and you become 4.5% faster. So essentially, basically in a nutshell, it removes your ability to teleport. When a trap is tripped, it speeds you up and slows the survivors down. That's what the waterlog shoe does. Now we pair this with the scarred hand, which also removes your ability to teleport to your traps. But the interesting thing about the scarred hand is that when a trap is triggered, instead of it being walk through, when you know when a survivor trips a trap, they usually be able to walk through it. When this is tripped, they can't. The phantasm actually becomes a mud phantasm and becomes solid. And the survivors cannot walk through it, it blocks them. Hence the, the name, Body Blocker Hag. So what you want to do with these add-ons is, preferably you want to be on an indoor map as it's easier to control and there's more places that you can put them to cut off survivors with traps. And you want to put them in areas. What I found was that when I play my normal hag, I spread my traps out a lot because I don't want one trap to be tripped and then the next straight away. So I don't have time. I'm stuck in animation. I don't have time to teleport and hit them. So I spread my traps out a certain distance. When you're playing this, I notice that you, you want the traps to be actually be quite close because you want to try and corner survivors in a certain area and make it easier for you to catch up to hit them because you can't teleport. That's what I found. I may be wrong. I am not the number one hag player. I just play her because I like her. So this this is my experience. There may be other people out there who can give you better information than me. If there is, please feel free to go and watch them as I would love to see many, many more hag players out there as there just isn't enough of her. But anyway, back to the build. Um, those are the add-ons and I pair this with Midwich indoor map. Um, I pick Midwitch because for me, Midwitch is my favorite indoor map for Hag. Um, I, I, I tend to play this map better. Not, not, not that I'm bad on other indoor maps, this is just the one that I prefer the most. Mainly because if it comes down to end game, the doors on Midwitch are very easy to monitor. as they're, they're both, they're always in the same place. Very short distance between the two and you can keep an eye on them very easily. Um, so that is why we're going to Midwitch. Now as for the perks that I put with this, this is a build that I don't tend to run often. This is just what I chose for this particular game. And that is the Scourge Talk Pain Res, the Dead Man Switch. Agitation, because Midwitch is notorious for having dead zones of hooks. Um, if you've played Midwitch, I'm sure you already know this, that not the whole map, but there'll usually be one corridor where there is no goddamn hook. 
and it's usually where the corridor that basement is on and because basement is there the game seems to think that because you've got basement here and a hook up above on the second floor that you've got plenty of hooks to get to but if you down somebody at the end of the corridor where basement is and you've got to travel all the way down the corridor to the basement you are not making it and even with agitation if you're too far away you may not make it so and midwich is notorious for having bad hook spawn so be careful of that um, and I also use my Franklins because I always use Franklins and it's just my base base perk for my hag. So. so that is what we're doing, that is where we're going and that is what we're using. Um, this game will give you a little taster of how the body blocker um, work. Some people enjoy this type of play. I mean, I don't mind it. I, I just, I prefer to be able to teleport with my traps. That That's how I trained myself when I was first started playing hag. I got used to the fast teleports and where to place my traps optimally so that I could get around the map and catch survivors off guard and that is just how I prefer to play. But you know what they say, a change is as good as a holiday so it's always good to have a little change now and again. So I thought you might enjoy this build. So we're going to get into it. Um, I guess that's it. So I'm going to let the footage play and I shall see you on the other side guys. So here we are, loading in on Midwich, the uh, familiar air raid sirens, which I love so much. Now here I'm just trying to get into the right position to place the trap to make sure that it actually blocks the entrance and that they can't get around it. Um, when I come to pallets, I tend to place it, you want to place the trap directly in the middle of the pallet so that they can't pull the pallet. Um, usually I would place it either side or around the, the back, but you want to cut off that pallet so we place it in the middle. So if they come up into this room, they're going to have a hard job getting in, out or around it. Head over here and then I hear, I heard David here, so we come down. The stair trap here is good because obviously that will block going up the stairs. Here we have basement with God pallet. Nice little trap in the middle there. And when playing this build, I have to get used to not placing traps where I usually would. I have set places where I would put my traps on Midwich. And I don't want to put them there on this one. So as you can see there, um, that's not a David, that's a Vittorio. He got um, blocked by the God pallet trap that I put up. And then he goes upstairs and got trapped by the one on the stairs as well. So that was a good start for me. I didn't expect to get her down so quickly with this build. And next to basement as well, which is obviously always good fag. So into the basement we go with Mr. Vittorio. I had to resist the urge to put a trap here as there really was no point, they'll just walk around it as it's, it's too open, so back up. This trap here that I put by the pallet, I should have put that further in, it's a little too far out. I realised my mistake here and I back up to put it under the pallet. Now she can say, I'm bunching my traps together in one area here, as if they come over this way, I want to try and block all exits and routes that they could take to get away. Desperately resisting the urge to teleport. And we got a hit on him there and he tries to dead hard here. I don't think he's sure what's going on so we get another down. Again next to basement. Vittoria's gone into second. I go back here as I thought somebody had snuck past, but they hadn't. So I retrap the pallet. No, I didn't retrap the pallet. <laughs> I take David and I don't take him to basement as I don't want to walk through the guard pallet. So we take David out to the courtyard. You see scratch marks. And I knew she was here. I could hear the Claudette, but I couldn't see her because she's in the dark clothes and she's there in the the shadows. I just couldn't see her. So. 
put it, bless her, I think she might have made a run for to help Vittorio, but it was too late. And again, putting the traps back in the same places. We can hear Claudette in here, so first we're going to put the trap in the middle of the pallet to prevent her pulling the pallet down. Now you may be watching this and thinking, wow, this build is awesome. Just remember that what I found out when I got to the end screen was the Claudette in this match was actually a, a baby. What I would class as a baby Claudette. She had low ranking perks and she had no prestige. Um, against high ranking Swifts and things, this build may not work so well. So, uh, For some reason we have another Vittorio in the basement there. I'm not really sure why he was down there. I guess he was looting because the other player was already dead. And um, while I'm down in him, Claudette actually COVID, and uh, I, I wanted to let her know it's okay. I'm going to respect the Kobe. Don't be scared. Since everybody else is dead and the the other players on the floor, and they've done one gen. There is no need to go super sweat mode. So I'm trying to let her know that it's okay. <laughs> but bless her, she does she does go back down to unhook Vittorio. Now here I was waiting to see what Vittorio did and he doesn't move at all so I just assumed that he's not playing, that either he wants out or he's given up, maybe walked away from the computer. So I decided to down him and hook him and give Claudette the hatch. Claudette is just not bothered at all. She's just there self-caring. And it takes her an eternity to self-care. So we, we leave her there for a while to self-care before we go and look for hatch for her. But anyway, this was a very, very short game. As you can see, I don't think these survivors were prepared to face a body blocker as you don't see it often with Hag. Um, it's probably not the best example of body blocker Hag, but you get the idea, you get the gist. As you can see there, she can't get past. She's got to wait for the Phantasm to go. Now she can get past. So I'm just going to take her to hatch. So yeah, if you give this build a go, I'd love to know how it went for you. Uh, what map you picked to play it on. And whether you enjoyed it or not. I personally, as I said, I don't mind it. I don't love it. I always prefer to be able to teleport. But it is nice to do something different. So there you have it. You'll see on the end screen here, the poor Claudette was a baby, so I, I'm, I'm quite pleased that I let her, I respected her Kobe and let her go, as she is a new player, so you're welcome, Claudette. So my friends, that was the body blocker hack game. Uh, build you will not see me run often, you will not see me play it often, and I probably will never post a video about it again. As, as I said, it's, I don't hate it, I just don't love it either, and I always prefer to play Hag normally if I can, so... But it just gives you an idea of how the add-ons work, and maybe you can make the build work better, you can have more fun with it, or at least just give it a try, which is what I hope to accomplish from these videos, is just showing you the sort of things that you can do with Hag, and hopefully encouraging other people to play her, as Hag is not the lowest pick killer, as of currently, I believe that the Twins is, but Hag is definitely up there. I think she's third least picked out of all the killers. The people just don't play her for whatever reason. Um, from my comments on TikTok, I see a lot of comments saying that Hag is boring, Hag is weak, uh, they don't know how to play her, they don't have the patience for the traps and, and whatnot. But what I can say for that is that if you, if you do put the time in, and, and you practice and you take every game as a learning curve, which I still do to this day, even though I, I'm more familiar with the maps now and, and where I'm going to trap and how I'm going to play the map. Um, it becomes easier and, and you know where to, you're going to put your traps, you know how you're going to play the map and you tend to get used to the paths that the survivors will run and which loops, you'll know which loops to play, which ones to trap to get them to move on and things like that. And it just does become easier. And I also think when I 
very rarely but when i do face a hag when i play survivor i enjoy facing the hag i think she brings an element of surprise to the game and, and that spooky horror feel back as you never know when you're gonna trip a trap and the amount of times i've been jump scared by hag traps is up there with the amount of times i've been jump scared and ripped off gens by a michael myers so you know it, it does bring that element back and i do like that so um i really do hope more of you will give her a go and maybe even if you don't main her if you just play her now and again so we do get to see more hagathas out there that would be great too but anyway um if you've been watching me for a while you know my thoughts on hag and why i do these videos so i'm preaching to the choir um i hope you enjoyed this video i do have another one to upload which i will hopefully get done either later tonight or tomorrow um that was a normal hag play game with my usual add-ons and such um against quite a um i won't say sweaty but i will say coordinated swift that they knew what they were doing they, they knew how to play against a hag so that may be quite interesting for you um i do like to post not only games where i actually absolutely stomp the survivors and and win with five gens still up but i also do like to play the games that were a bit rough on me and where i really had to try to get the win and the survivors i was you know that we're both easily matched with each other and there's a lot of give and take in the game so you're not going to win at five gens and it's going to come down right to the, the wire at the end i do like to post those games as well as it, it displays more of the hag's powers and how you can play her and also how you can pull games back with hag which i find when i play other killers i don't feel like i can as much I don't feel like I'm in control and that if it comes down to end game, I can pull this game back. Whereas with Hagger, I do feel like I can do that. Not always. Of course, there are games where I get stomped myself and I lose badly. But that's okay. It's okay to lose. And it's okay to win. Just so long as you're having fun while you're doing it. Anyway, guys, I think I've taken up enough of your time for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, a like, a comment, a share, a subscribe will always be appreciated. I love reading your comments and I always try to reply back to anybody that comments. So please feel free. Don't be shy. Sometimes I'm shy and I won't leave comments because I'm worried. But please feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you. And um, I hope to see you all again soon. Take care and enjoy whatever it is you may be doing tonight. <laughs> Goodbye, guys.